Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. This is a Sunday broadcast, hence the casual attire, and I wanted to go a little deeper today. I've been talking for the last few days about looking at life through the spiritual lens, and I want to throw one out there about, do you live your life according to somebody else's rules? And if you say no, are you sure about that? So before I jump in and explain all what I'm thinking, processing, and sorting out for this, let me introduce, my, introduce myself first and give you a little overview so you know where we're going with this. So first of all, hi, my name is Barry Selby. I'm an inspirational speaker, love and relationships expert, and author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. I do highly recommend it because it's my book. Um, and I also help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, and that's what informs my work. And hi, Marianne, I see you in my broadcast. Um, and also what started these talks almost three years ago now, called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And the last few days I've been talking about looking at life through a spiritual lens. And I don't mean it from being woo-woo. It's more about how to be functionally effective and present with yourself so you have a more enjoyable way of experiencing life without artificial substances. <laughs> My mind went there for a second. So today I'm talking about um, are you living a life according to somebody else's rules? Now, most people are going to go, no, 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 I'm not doing that. But I would beg to differ. The reason why I'm talking about it, actually, is I had a couple of conversations today at Agape this morning that sort of fed into this idea and this perspective about how so many people um, are run by rules that aren't theirs. And this is what I mean by this. It's not that somebody's, guide, somebody's telling you what to do, but so many of us, and I'm, I'm guilty of this too, have a set of beliefs running that aren't ours, or I should say that aren't our chosen ones. And this is a trap we fall into a lot, where we think we know what we're actually choosing but there's default programming. And I've talked about that part of before, but I'm gonna speak from a different angle because in, um, I was talking about childhood patternings, which is this will probably include, but it's more about what it is that we do when we choose something. If it really is from our own volition, our own preferences, or we're doing something because we think we should. Now, shoulds are one of these pieces of the puzzle, by the way. When you're looking at doing something or not doing something or choosing somebody or not choosing somebody, whatever that is in your life, whether it's a new job or a relationship or a location you're going to live in, that sort of thing. If there's part of you that has a should running in the back of your head, that's one of those rules that's probably not one of yours. Like you should move in a certain place because other people think better of you. Like that should have any bearing on your choices. But people do this, you know. Secondly, is there's also the piece where we think that our, well, maybe it's just me, but I don't think it is, where we think that we'll somehow shame our parents or we'll upset some rules laid down by them if we choose a certain thing. Like, I mean, how many of us, <laughs> maybe again, maybe just me, got in trouble with their parents because of the partnership we chose when we were dating when we were younger? That may not be the case anymore because maybe you've outgrown them, maybe your parents aren't around anymore, or maybe you've been married and divorced a couple of times. But the thing is, we still may run that tape in our head. And this is the thing. It's not somebody overtly telling us anything, but it's maybe somebody who overtly, to who overtly told us something when we were kids and we're still running those tapes in our heads. It's like we have this um, resource library of limiting rules and beliefs that govern our choices as adults. Doesn't sound very appetizing, does it? But most of us do that, deal with that. I went through my, I've been through and still go through layers of understanding this. Just to be um, <laughs> overtly transparent, I had rules, and it's interesting because I was actually, let me quote from a book. Um, there's a chapter in one of my favorite books by David Data called, called The Way of Superior Man. And one of those chapters says, live as and it's about men is live as if your father is dead I'll say it again live as if your father is dead not to mean that it's a you want to get rid of your father but what it is is that we as men and as boys before us often get raised in a situation where we don't get told that it's our opportunity our ambition our role to exceed what our father expected of us and what happens is a default happens because for most of us again all men but most of them, and I'll talk about the ladies in a moment, so don't, stay tuned. But for most of us boys, and then to men, we have this unwritten rule in our psyche that if we outshine our father, we might shame him. And I didn't realize I was carrying this around until um, late 40s. But I was carrying this belief, and there's nothing to do with my dad. 
because he never said this to me, but I took it on as some wiring diagram in my head that I couldn't exceed my father's success financially, my father's, um, well, actually, it was probably that one, the biggest one, financial, financial success, because somehow if I did that, I would shame him because it meant that I was doing better than him, and that means he didn't do as good as I did. There's some, all this belief structures. This is the rules I'm talking about. For ladies, you may have your own ones. Maybe that if you choose a relationship that doesn't honor your parents somehow, that's a rule that you may be breaking. So I'm not necessarily going to be, well, we'll see if I can, uh, see if answers come through, but I do want to say, I was going to say check yourself. That isn't the appropriate way of saying it. <laughs> but I would advise you to start looking at what you've chosen in your life and what you're not willing to choose for your life um, because of what some rules you're running against yourself. I actually had another title I was planning to talk about today, but it may come up another day because I had some other feedback that happened in conversations earlier today it's about where we play smaller than we really are, that we hold back from all our, all our possibilities and, and we don't live our full expression because of rules. And actually, this starts playing in. Okay, good. I'm arguing myself here. Something happened this morning in a conversation for me personally was I was getting this feedback about how well, it wasn't that I should be, but there's a, there's a calling for me that needs to be stepping up to a bigger place, speaking on stages and running my own events and having people come and be in my audience, which I've not done anything about. Well, I did a couple of workshops seven, no, 10 years ago that were very small ones. But this came up today with three friends of mine who are all speakers and teachers who lead a big audiences. And they look at me like, when am I going to step up? And there's an immediate feeling of like, yes, I want to do that. And then there was an immediately following that was the feeling of these shoulds, these rules. Like, well, um, I couldn't because of this and that and the other. And, and the truth is, I don't remember what the reasons were because they weren't true. But I watched them show up. So I'm going to ask you as homework, a suggestion for you, is to consider for yourself what maybe you've held back on what you really wanted, whether that is a relationship or a job or a relocation to a new country. I've been there, done that. Um, <laughs> a possibility for a new project you want to launch. Maybe you want to be an entrepreneur and develop something amazing in the world, but some part of you is not believing it's possible because some rules you took on from somebody else, maybe a parent, maybe a teacher, maybe an ex-partner that told you that you couldn't do what you wanted to do now. Because I'm going to say this blatantly, whatever you set your mind to, and this is actually, somebody was quoted this this morning, so it's all perfect, from the, um, well, let me say it this way first, that you can have anything you want, you can do anything you want, as long as you set your mind to it and you open up to the possibility. To quote from this morning, somebody quoted me, Marianne, Mary Williamson's quote that was used at um, Nelson Mandela's inauguration address, that basically talks about, you know, hiding a light under a bushel. Who are we to believe that we're not meant to shine brightly? We take on beliefs, rules, when we're younger, from people who don't know us really that well. So my in encouragement, my invitation here for you is to look at those things you've held back from doing because something is telling you you shouldn't do it. And it's not an intuitive sense. It's not any gut feeling down here. It's something in your rec tape recordings in your head. Yes, tape recordings and going, going to that part, part of life. It's the, it's the archives of recordings, that reference library I mentioned earlier, of tapes, rules, um, installed beliefs by other people who you thought knew better than you did. And then you run that tape any time you come up against a new limit, an upper limit, a new place. I'm watching, sorry, I'm, I'm just seeing these dropping in what I want to talk about here, mention here. So here's one thing I want to say. This is part of one thing I talk about comfort zones. Um, for some people, it's we've self defined our comfort zone, the limit we play in. As I was saying this morning about my talk this morning about me going out to speak on stages and having events and that sort of thing is way beyond my comfort zone. I can see it and I, can, I know I can walk into that. But what I have to affirm to and remind myself, which I teach my clients, <laughs> of course it comes back in my face, is, this, is that beyond our comfort zone isn't the uncomfort zone. Beyond our comfort zone is what I call the magic zone. Because outside of the comfort zone is a place we don't know anything about. Now most of us, and I did this myself, so I'm guilty as charged, have looked upon the beyond our comfort zone as this um, unsafe place we can't go because we don't know what's out there. Versus that, that place we don't know anything about that could be wondrous and amazing and take us beyond our wildest dreams. It's all what we talk about in here. 
it's all that programming we've taken on and all those rules we play by. And thankfully, because of some experience I had yesterday with some beautiful friends at Santa Monica Pier, where we sat in a circle and affirmed some of the things we're letting go of. And then today, on top of that, having some amazing conversations that told me what I'm stepping into. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm declaring it right here in a way, is that I'm stepping into a place where I'm going to be much more visible in the world, not just through the camera, but in, in real life with people in terms of live events, bigger audiences, bigger speaking opportunities to change people's lives. So if you're watching this and you have some ideas, please let me know because I'm gonna I'm claiming this now as much as it scares the bejesus out of me. But I want to say this to you as your encouragement is what is it you've put aside or put down or denied yourself because you've had some sort of rules you're running that it's not possible to have them. Your um, limits are only defined by yourself. Nobody else. It's not somebody else's, it's not somebody else's job. It's also not somebody else's um, confinement that can contain you. But if you're like me and like all of us, we all tend to, I'm going to be general about it, and I'll assume it's you personally, but we all generally carry on these beliefs. And I'm looking back at my own life just to give me some, some points along the way. I was talking, because again, conversations that want to keep coming back, they will feed into this. I was talking to two friends of mine asked me about how I got to be here, like in the United States, and how things worked. And I talked about my journey. And I didn't have any clue how it was going to happen to move. Because when I was in England, I was back so, so I could date myself. Um, I was a mainframe computer programmer. Nothing to do with what I do now, except I understand how minds work more. And I worked in Europe before I came out to the States. And I literally had this idea of going somewhere where they spoke English and the weather was sunny. That's all I had on my radar. And within two weeks, I had a job in LA. Now, people say, that's amazing. It's like, at the time, I just thought, of course, because I didn't have limits or beliefs about what I could or couldn't do. So in that context, the idea of moving to a new country, a new continent even, wasn't something that was um, violating any rules. In fact, if anything, it was an easier access than anything else. And what I've realized a lot of times over my path is that I've been gifted with stretches that move me a little bit outside of my comfort zone each time that take me higher and higher into possibility. I just haven't seen it that way until more recently. So just to be clear, I'm, I'm still referencing and seeing this differently myself. So my, um, I won't say encouragement, but also my reminder to you, because we're all the same in this context, is that we all have possibilities of having things we want if we just simply stop limiting ourselves based on rules that aren't ours. So if you are someone who's been stuck by those and you're not sure what to do with it, I'm going to invite you to reach out to me because I've had some experience and I can help you with some of those um, rule removal techniques. But also if you're just sitting with this for yourself and you want to consider, and I'm not, I'm not saying you have to work with me or anything, you can look at what it is you've been setting up as your rule book that is confining you behind some sort of barrier to what you really want to have and see if those rules are really true. Because when you start looking at those rules in the light of day, so to speak, you might, you might realize or might decide they have no value anymore. That you know now better than you did when you were 10, for example. Because we tend to learn by experience. So I'm encouraging you to look at your opportunities in life rather than closed doors. Especially if you think you've passed the point of having what you want. I've heard that one a couple of times myself, just to be transparent. So know that anything's possible. What you want can happen. And if you're willing to put yourself first and not the rules before yourself, and put yourself first, you can have those things. Again, I'll put a link in the comments. You can reach out to contact me to have a chat about this because I know you can have what you want if you're really clear about it and you want to shift the blocks, the rules, the denials in the way of that. But it's up to you because you have to take the action. And that happened for me today, so I know how it feels. <laughs> so if you're feeling a bit squirmy in your seat, been there today for me. So I hope this is making sense to you and if it's been of help to you. Um, this, is, this is part of a series I've done a bunch of talks. Well, I've done 855, 156 talks over the last three years about love and relationships, but the last few have been more, gen more general about, as I've called it, living life through a spiritual lens, meaning how do you look at life from a more conscious, awake and present moment so that life can work for you and, and you can be in flow with it. 
So this is one of those talks. Yesterday I did a whole talk about broken agreements, actually about keeping agreements. So if you've only quit agreement issues, watch this bro yesterday's broadcast. I've also talked about um, stop being a victim and also about forgiveness. So this is another piece of the puzzle, how to live a more full, expressive, and basically conscious life, looking through the spiritual lens. So if you have any questions about this, please put it below in the comments. I'll respond when I sign off. Again, I'll put some links in the comments. You can reach out to me. I'll put my book in the comments because I did promote it. Um, and other ways you can find out how to work with me as well. So check out the links I put in the comments. Um, this is a Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. If you haven't seen them before, you can watch me live at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook after that, which is barryselby.author on Facebook. You can like my page there. But Facebook in its infinite wisdom doesn't seem to save all my broadcasts. I've only got the last three, four hundred of them. So and since I've got 800, I want to save them for posterity and for review and for binging if you want to do that too. Binge watching, excuse me. Binge watching is the word. Um, so I have a YouTube channel where I save all of my broadcasts for safety and for replay use. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby, um, most of my social media is Barry Selby. I've changed a couple to, anyway, another topic. Um, on my YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. You can watch all of my broadcasts from the newest to oldest. You can search through the titles to find the ones that speak to you. And you can comment there as well as you can here. So um, having said all that, I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me as always. And I always say, keep I always say take care of yourself. This tool, when you understand and you can release those limiting um, rules you've been running against yourself, will absolutely help you take care of yourself to a much greater level and have what you want. So with that, I thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate you being with me. Um, if you want to share it with anybody, you want to have questions answered, please put them below. Feel free to share it. And um, as I said before, take care of yourself. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And I wish you well. I'll see you soon. Bye.